This is the audiobook sample for Death of a Messenger, Koakane Hawaiian Mystery Book 3, by Robert McCaw. This is my 40th audiobook, and it was released on May 9th, 2021. We're at the Big 40, and I'm happy to say that it's a book that takes place in the land of my ancestors, Hawaii. What a treat it was to get to narrate a book set on the islands that treated the area, the culture, and the people with respect. And it's my first true mystery novel, no less. At least in the sense that the mystery doesn't take a back seat to a romance or something. I had a lot of fun doing this one, and I'm proud of the work I put in. And it's a very good whodunit, too, with interesting characters. There is one thing that I didn't like about the story itself and that's that it leans a little too heavily into the both-sides-are-bad type of conflict generation. That doesn't really work when you apply it to the Hawaiian situation. In the context of the story, it means there are bad cops and people in power, but there's also bad Hawaiian extremists who want to forcibly return the land to monarchy. Other characters who are presented as sensible in the story, like one of the main character's fellow detectives, decry the latter ideology and say that the Hawaiian extremists are reductive and harmful. As someone who knows and is related to many people who would like the land returned to its rightful owners, I can say with certainty that they don't want to bring the world back to feudal times. They want the advantages and disadvantages put in place, legislatively and illegally by white settlers and plantation owners, stripped away so Hawaiians can regain their independence and agency. Let's not forget that this is all quite recent, with many of these things occurring only about a century and a half ago, if that. The illegal seizure of Hawaiian territory is not ancient history. And yes, while of course there are extremists of any ideology, I didn't like how the most prominent representatives of Hawaiian independence were ones harboring extreme prejudice while the representative of the police was the main character, and obviously much more nuanced as a result. That was just something that didn't sit right with me, as someone who's passionate about justice for Hawaiians. Other than that, I think the narrative was handled with subtlety and respect, and this is one audiobook that is definitely worth picking up if you're at all interested in my voice, Hawaiian culture, a good mystery, or all of the above. I hope you enjoy this audiobook sample. Chapter 1 Hawaii County Chief Detective Koa Kane strapped in, and the U.S. Army UH-72A Lakota helicopter lifted off the Hilo tarmac. An anonymous 911 call to the Hawaii County Emergency Command Center had reported a corpse at Pohakuloa, the Army's remote live-fire training area, or PTA. Sergeant Bassa had alerted Koa, and was now sitting next to him as the chopper headed for the Army Reservation in the Humuula Saddle between Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, two of the five volcanoes that form the big island of Hawaii. The chopper turned west and climbed toward the saddle. Koa barely noticed, though. The mad dash to catch the chopper had aggravated the pinched nerve in his neck and he sat stiffly erect to avoid further jolts of pain. As they passed over an ambulance heading up the saddle road, Sergeant Bassa leaned over, shouting above the roar of the engines. That's the county physician and the crime scene techs down there. I told them to get their butts up to Pohakuloa. Koa spotted flashing lights in the distance and felt a spark of excitement. A crime scene did that to him. He counted ten vehicles, military police jeeps, EOD, explosive ordnance disposal, vehicles, a tracked ambulance, and a fire truck. As the helicopter approached, Koa saw that the vehicles were spread out along a barely visible jeep trail that meandered east of a sizable cinder cone. Yellow tape marked a path cleared by EOD personnel. Several men stood near an oval pit at the end of the tape. As the chopper settled between two MP vehicles, a military policeman dressed in camo with a silver first lieutenant's bar 
broke away from the cluster near the pit and hurried toward the chopper. Jerry Ziegler's ferret-like face and crooked nose identified him as the commander of the military police detachment at Bohaku Loa. Hello, Jerry. Koa shook hands with the 25-year-old military police officer. Though they came from different backgrounds, they shared a common bond. Both had grown up dirt poor. The Kane family had been respected in ancient times, but Koa's father and grandfather had been virtual slaves at the Hamakua sugar mill. Ziegler had been a South Dakota farm boy. Both had known hardship growing up, and both had been rescued by the U.S. Army. Koa with the 5th Special Forces Group, and Jerry by the military police. They'd worked together a half dozen times when the army had pitched in on disaster relief and bonded while helping folks after a big earthquake hit the west side of the island, wrecking hundreds of homes and schools. Koa remained smiling, even as Jerry's vigorous handshake sent a blazing streak of pain radiating down his right arm. Without being obvious, he placed both hands behind his neck and arched his back. The pinched nerve was getting worse, just as the doctor had said it would. He dreaded the thought of spinal surgery, but it might be better than the damn pain. He wasn't supposed to feel this old at 43. Mercifully, the helicopter pilot shut down his twin engines, and Koa could make himself heard. You got a body? He asked Jerry. Ziegler nodded. Stay inside the yellow tape. There are unexploded shells all over the PTA, and tons of them around this area. Ziegler led the policemen between two yellow tapes, got Sergeant Boss's call about 11.30 this morning, and we put an observer up in a chopper. My man had no trouble spotting the probable site, but it took us a while to get here. The bomb disposal boys blew a dud on the way in, he said wending his way across the uneven ground. The 911 caller nailed it. It's in a lava tube, mutilated and decomposed. A human male, but it's going to take a medic to reconstruct much more. Nobody but me has been in there, and I didn't venture far or touch anything. A link to purchase Death of a Messenger is in the description. This title was a royalty share production, so I make 20% from any purchases. Thanks for listening.